A dangerous nuclear escalation is occurring and no brakes can be applied to it. We appear to be sliding deeper into a 50s era Cold War with a constant fear of the big bomb. International pressure on Russia continues on multiple fronts, and a new front might just open a few hundred kilometers from Moscow. China may be forced to take a stand against the West and in favor of Russia as early as next week. Also, there's a few more toxic chemical accidents that have occurred. Plus, we'll announce the winner of our previous giveaway and tell you how you can enroll in this week's giveaway. There's a lot to unpack here, so let's jump in. Is it time to duck and cover? If you've ever been one to long for the good old days of the 50s, we may be heading that way, at least with the nuclear arms race. In February, Russia suspended its participation in the New START Treaty, the last remaining nuclear arms control pact with the United States. Now, citing the U.S. and NATO's desire to inflict a strategic defeat on Russia and try to get Russia's nuclear facilities, Putin publicly suspended its participation in the Treaty on Strategic Offensive Arms. But what does that mean? First, it removes the limits for each country to possess no more than 1,550 deployed nuclear warheads and 700 deployed missiles and bombers. Suspension of the treaty also removes each side's capability to inspect the other's facilities, production of new warheads and delivery systems like hypersonic missiles or kamikaze drones. Suspension of the treaty goes beyond just the inspection of the facilities, however. It also means that the two countries stop sharing data about their nuclear programs. Russia stopped doing this in February, and the White House announced this week that it too would stop sharing biannual detailed data on its strategic nuclear forces. While Russian officials have stressed that Moscow has not abandoned the New START nuclear arms treaty with the United States, Russian diplomats have refused to participate in crucial meetings with American officials as the treaty requires and failed to allow the resumption of inspections of nuclear facilities. Now, since the start of the Ukrainian invasion, Putin, Russian officials, and panelists on propaganda programs, they've all threatened or alluded to using nuclear weapons nearly 100 times. It's also known that Russia has successfully tested their Sarmat intercontinental ballistic missile, which is likely in deployment now, as it was scheduled to be ready at the end of 2022. Now, when Russia tested the Samroth a year ago, they fort notified the U.S. of the test because of the New START treaty. Under current conditions, Russia is not obligated to notify anyone. Without this notification, were a hypersonic, nuclear-capable missile to be launched in a test, NATO and the United States would have less than one minute to determine with absolute confidence whether the launch is a test or it's armed with one of the nearly 6,000 nuclear warheads Russia has in its stockpile, which is the largest stockpile in the world. Now, unfortunately, there's no technical or scientific way to determine if the missile is armed with a nuclear warhead. Unless the trajectory is far from any target, I would think most world militaries would have to assume that it's armed. Now, that brings us all dangerously close to an all-out nuclear exchange. Now, unlike the 50s, Weapons and delivery systems are more advanced and more deadly. The Samroth, for instance, is said to have a range exceeding 6,835 miles and can carry up to 10 nuclear warheads, which are far more destructive than anything dropped in 1945. Now, these warheads are called multiple independently target reentry vehicles, which means that they can be sent to hit different targets simultaneously. We also have to remember the recent use of hypersonic missiles. Though they have a much smaller range of slightly over a thousand miles, they can reach their maximum target range in under 10 minutes, faster than even radar systems can detect their approach. Now, just as folks prepare for an unknown escalation and proliferation of atomic weaponry, built shelters, and practiced duck and cover drills in the 1950s, we may be entering a similar period. What do you think? Will cooler heads prevail? Will we see any major countries undergo a leadership change or a cessation of hostilities that could avert what seems to be our determined path? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Russia, Ukraine. There are several indications that Russia's war on Ukraine and the resulting sanctions imposed by the rest of the world are beginning to erode the Russian economy drastically. Now, Putin has repeatedly claimed that sanctions imposed on Russia had not affected the country's economy. Still, he admitted yesterday that the sanctions can really have a negative effect on the economy. In a recent move, Russia attached a 10% tax on top of the 40% mandatory discounted price for the sale of any international business attempting to sell off their stores, factories, or companies in Russia. In February, the European Council announced that it had adopted the 10th package of sanctions against Russia and those who support its war against Ukraine. Other countries, like Japan, have also sanctioned Russia, but is it enough? China and India have 
benefited from the cheap cut rate fossil fuel imports, defense contracts, and a new market for their goods. This has propped up the Russian economy. Now, along with several moves of the banks of Russia and moves to transact only in the ruble, the Russian economy has been able to endure, but that may be ending. Russian oligarch Oleg Deripaska, an energy and metals tycoon, he recently said this, there will be no money already next year. We will need foreign investors. He also confessed that the Russian government had already begun to shake us down. For now, Russia can finance its decline in GDP and resulting in deficit through its national wealth fund. Still, the oligarchs will grow tired of footing the bill at some point, and the long-term detriment to the Russian economy is still unknown, but more likely by the day. Now, the chief of staff for imprisoned Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny recently urged countries to continue the pressure of sanctions. He claimed they put Putin under pressure and under stress, which would result in him making mistakes and drawing the ire of oligarchs. After being poisoned with a military-grade nerve agent called Novichok, opposition leader Navalny is now imprisoned in a two-by-three-meter cell in Russia. The future of the Russian economy also looks bleak now that the U.S. has replaced Russia as Europe's top crude oil supplier. Russian oil supply to Europe has dropped from an almost third of all imports to under 4%, while U.S. oil imports have risen to 18%. India and China have ramped up oil imports from Russia since the invasion of Ukraine, but this has been at a discounted price and required a new supply chain and rerouting of assets, sometimes using a shadow fleet of ships. That means higher transport costs for Russia and often laundering money through non-traditional channels. Both those come at added costs, which for the reduced profits, even when the barrels per day sold, appear solid and steady on paper. And it's not just oil deals that are hurting the Russian economy. Czech nuclear plants will also switch their nuclear fuel from Russia to the United States. Westinghouse Electric Company and Chez have signed an agreement to supply fuel assemblies from next year for the Dukovani nuclear power plant as it switches from Russian-supplied fuel. Now, the Czech Republic uses nuclear power for 34% of its electricity, generating this from four reactors at Dukovani and two at Timun. The reactors have an existing three-year supply, so the switchover should be easy for them. But it is notable because it is a contract estimated to be worth several billion euros. I mention it also because Westinghouse inked a major nuclear reactor deal in Ukraine in December of 2021, and that may have been the proverbial straw that broke the camel's back for Putin, who then chose to invade Ukraine just two months later. Now, the Czech deal is a massive financial loss to Russia and a personal point of pride for Putin. Perhaps acting out of a sense of pride that goeth before the fall, Russian ambassadors warned that Finland and Sweden would become targets of Russia if they joined NATO. He stated, If it still seems to anyone that this will somehow improve Europe's security, rest assured that the new members of the hostile bloc will become a legitimate target for Russian retaliatory measures, including those of a military nature. Now, Sweden has summoned the Russian ambassador to make a clear statement against this blatant attempt at influence. This channel reported earlier this week that the Nordic nations had agreed to operate their air force as a single unit. Turkey is set to approve Finland's NATO membership through its parliament this week. Watch for a massive NATO buildup on the Finnish front shortly after Finland is ratified, expected to occur in April. This will put incredible pressure on Russia and Putin in particular, who remains concentrated on the war in Ukraine. Now, Putin surely wants to avoid a front to defend, a mere 435 kilometers or 270 miles from St. Petersburg and 1,060 kilometers or 658 miles from Moscow. Russia is pushing back on the world in every way that it can, from threats made by ambassadors to threats of nuclear war to now arresting a Wall Street Journal reporter on spying charges. In a move that seals the deal that we are in a brand new Cold War, the journalist's arrest is the first time a correspondent has been detained on spying charges since the Cold War. Evan Gergoshevich was detained while allegedly trying to obtain classified information. The Federal Security Service, known by the acronym FSB, said Thursday. The journalist had just completed a story on the erosion of the Russian economy. Now, Russia is cracking down on any dissent and passing laws that criminalize any statements perceived as in opposition to the government or the war effort. Earlier this week, a Russian court convicted a father over social media posts critical of the war and sentenced him to two years in prison. His 13-year-old daughter was sent to an orphanage. Russia has had no acquittals in treason and espionage cases since 1999. Espionage under Russian law can be punishable by up to 20 years in jail. As we approach the 450th day of the war in Ukraine by early April, the German government has agreed to send an additional $13 billion worth of military support to Ukraine. 
Ukraine struck a railway depot with HIMARS and knocked out power supplies in a Russian-occupied city deep behind the front line in the city of Melipatol. The city is a full 80 kilometers behind the front lines, and the attack has been viewed by many as a possible precursor to a massive Ukrainian counteroffensive. Now, Russia depends almost entirely on its supply lines via trains from Russia, so any significant strike on its railway infrastructure is lethal to its war efforts. Elsewhere, Ukrainian forces claim to have held back several renewed Russian attacks near Bakhmut and Akhvarad. What do you think? Are we closer to a turning point in this world war, or are we reaching a critical boilover point with new fronts and a greater possibility of a nuclear altercation? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. China Europe is growing weary of China's lack of stance against Russian aggression in Ukraine. EU's president of the European Commission called for a stricter policy on China ahead of Beijing's visit. In a scathing speech ahead of her visit to China next week, the president of the European Commission warned Beijing not to side with Moscow in bringing compromised peace to Ukraine, saying how China continues to interact with Putin's war will be a determining factor for EU-China relations going forward. She added that the EU would reassess a 2020 trade deal with China and introduce a new strategy on economic security. Zelensky has renewed his desire to meet with the Chinese president. He said, I had contact with him before full-scale war, but during all this year, more than one year, I have not. Now, China may be unable to remain a neutral party profiting off the war for much longer. The added pressure on China is having the opposite effect. President Xi Jinping said he is preparing the country for war at the annual meeting of China's parliament. Xi wove the theme of war readiness through four separate speeches, in one instance telling his generals to dare to fight. Now, while conflict with the West or a total commitment to supply the Russian military is not imminent in his statements, it would be wise for the rest of the world to take the Chinese leader at his word. Xi gave a speech to military leaders last October where he said, In the face of wars that may be imposed upon us, we must speak to our enemies in a language they understand and use victory to win peace and respect. In the new era, the People's Army insists on using force to stop fighting. China has also threatened retaliation if House Speaker Kevin McCarthy meets with Taiwan's president, who is passing through the U.S. right now. Taiwan's president, Tsai Ing-wen, arrived in New York on a sensitive U.S. stopover on Wednesday, vowing en route not to let external pressure prevent the island from engaging with the world. Now, when Nancy Pelosi, McCarthy's predecessor, visited Taiwan last August, China responded with unprecedented live-fire military exercises surrounding the island. Watch for tensions in the South China Sea to skyrocket as early as next week. If that occurs, there will undoubtedly be a strong affirmation coming from China in support of Putin as well. What do you think? Are China's days of riding the fence and profiting mightily about to take a sharp turn? Do they have the will to back up their harsh rhetoric? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Giveaway For this week's giveaway, we'll give away a quick lot emergency gods for your first aid kit. To be eligible for a chance to win in this giveaway, just simply post a comment below and click the like button. And next week, I'll use a tool to draw a winner from the comments on this video randomly. And I'm not going to reach out to you unless your name appears on the screen next week. And you must have your email address listed on the About tab of your YouTube profile. Please ignore and report any comments telling you that you won or to contact me through WhatsApp or Telegram because it's not me. Now, for the last video's winner of the Gerber Gear Ultimate Knife, the winner is the subscriber Cynthia McLevin. I'll reach out to you shortly to get that sent to you. More toxic spills. If you've yet to receive the message about why you should be storing your own water and have the means to filter and treat your water, there have been two more high profile toxic spills. Emergency teams are working to secure 10 barges that broke loose from the tugboat on the Ohio River along the waterfront in Louisville, Kentucky, including a barge carrying some 1,400 metric tons of methanol that is partially submerged. It's one of the three wayward barges that have wedged themselves next to a dam near a power station. 1,400 metric tons of explosive methanol next to a hydroelectric power plant. What could go wrong? The situation is being monitored by the Ohio River Valley Water Sanitation Commission, which is already testing the water to keep tabs on the potential effects on the waterway from the East Palestine toxic waste disaster hundreds of miles to the Northeast. But so far, none of the barges are leaking. Come Monday, we may not be able to say the same. BNSF Railway, one of the largest freight railroads in North America, they said about 22 cars carrying mixed freight, including explosive ethanol and corn syrup, has just recently had an accident. Corn syrup is a byproduct of ethanol fuel production and can mix with ethanol to carry it further. 
Four of these cars caught on fire and people within half a mile of the incident were told to leave. It is this type of industrial accident that we encourage people to have a bug out bag ready. The situation on the outskirts of Raymond, Minnesota, just 100 miles west of Minnesota, could quickly escalate or could have easily been worse. Investigators haven't determined the cause of the derailment, but railway safety remains a high concern. Every day, the nation's railroads move millions of tons of raw materials and finished goods around the country on about 140,000 miles of rails. Still, their safety record is getting new attention amid the ongoing scrutiny of the East Palestine derailment disaster. The lasting impact of these disasters on the environment is also a big unknown. When testing occurs, the acceptable levels established by big businesses and the government may not match what you consider acceptable. It's vital that you focus on your water preps no matter where you live or how much precipitation your area gets on a regular basis. Storing enough water for each member and pet in your household is easier than you might think. And I'll link to a playlist on this channel where I show you several options for this vital prep. Water is the top tier prep to establish, and it's also one of the easiest to lock down. These are some of the most alarming signs that we've seen in decades, that more trouble is on the horizon. Dark clouds are forming in our future, and we must take note and prepare. And I keep emphasizing that message because I don't think it's too late for anyone to start building a foundation of per uh, personal preps and greater self-sufficiency no matter where you are. I mean, we all can acknowledge the world is rapidly changing. Things are moving quickly. What we thought was stable and forever becomes less stable every day. But you can get prepared to face that uncertainty. And I hope that you hear that message and start doubling down on your own prepping today. Again, as I share at the end of every one of these videos, there's a lot I'm working on. There's a lot that I feel like I still got to work on. And I will continue to push forward as long as I can to make sure I'm able to protect my family. If you have any thoughts or any feedback, feel free to post that below. And as always, stay safe out there.